Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be going in-depth into my week number 11, crazy, that's already week number 11, top 36 wide receiver rankings and tiers for the 2023 fantasy football season. But before we skedaddle, we hop on into things here, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that do leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on twitter or x please do so at notorious fntsy so without further ado let's get on in to my top 36 wide receiver rankings and tiers for week number 11 of the 2023 fantasy football season we begin with the S tier at the wide receiver position at number one with Tyreek Hill of the Miami Dolphins going up against the Las Vegas Raiders at home in Miami. Now, prior to the bye week in week nine in Germany, up against the Chiefs, Tyreek Hill was on the struggle bus. He did not get that revenge game. And honestly, he basically handed his former team the game by fumbling the rock. Now, while that very much frustrated me as a Miami Dolphins fan, at the end of the day, Tyreek is still one of the best receivers in the NFL. He's the wide receiver one in fantasy football on the season and we know what this Miami Dolphins offense is going to do. Up against bad defenses at home, the Miami Dolphins run train on those defenses. Remember the game against the Broncos, right? The up against the Giants, the Panthers, all these games at home. Tyreek Hill goes straight up nuclear up against the Patriots. That was the case as well. This is another home game up against a shitty defense. I think Tyreek Hill should easily be a top three receiver on the week. And honestly, I think he will finish as the wide receiver one. At number two, we got the Lambster, CD Lamb of the Dallas Cowboys going up against the Carolina Panthers in Carolina. Three straight weeks inside the top two at the wide receiver position, getting over 10 receptions in all three of those games as well as over 150 yards and in that stretch he has scored a grand total of four touchdowns now last week up against the Giants I did have some reasons to be worried about Lamb now, it had nothing to do with the matchup. It kind of did because I thought that the Cowboys might just be bending the Giants over the table, and then what would happen is they take the foot off the gas. That did not happen. That's a worry of mine again this week, but since it didn't happen against the Giants, why would we expect it to happen this week? So up against the Panthers, I expect C.D. Lamb to go absolutely haywire. At number three, we have Amon Ross St. Brown, the sun god of the Lions going up against the Bears. There is a very easy argument to make that Amon Ross St. Brown has been one one of the most consistent wide receivers in fantasy football this season. Currently the wide receiver seven on the year in PPR despite missing a game as well as having his bye week up against a not so hot Bears defense. This is yet another game for Amon Ra to keep up that consistency. Now with how efficient the running game is in the red zone and with how efficient Laporta is in the red zone, it's not a guarantee that Amon Ra scores every single week, right? He only has four touchdowns on the season. But when you're getting eight plus targets, when you could potentially see 15 or 19 targets like he's done in two of his last four games, he's going to get over 100 yards. He's going to be mighty fine. So up against the Bears, I expect straight up greatness. At number four, we have A.J. Brown of the Eagles going up against the Kansas City Chiefs in Kansas City. A.J. Brown is another one of these wide receivers that has just been going on a tear. They were on by the last week, but the week prior to that, he had nine targets, seven receptions, 66 receiving yards, and a touchdown up against the Dallas Cowboys, and he has scored one or more touchdowns in three straight weeks. Now I get, Nick, the Kansas City Chiefs defense is a lot better this season. I know, but at the end of the day, with how much Jalen Hurts feeds A.J. Brown, this game feels like a high-scoring game where A.J. Brown could finish inside of the top three at the wide receiver position. So inside of the S tier, the top four feels very fair to me. Moving now to the A tier, at number five, we have Keenan Allen. Now, Keenan Allen does have a questionable tag. He did not practice on Wednesday. It is important to monitor his practice reports on Thursday today, because it's not out yet, on Friday, as well as on Friday, which we just said Friday twice. It's Freaky Friday, baby. But Keenan Allen going up against the Green Bay Packers. Now, I know on paper the Packers' defense is definitely better against the pass than up against the run, but Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler are the two pieces of this Chargers offense. They are both guys that are going to be heavily fed like Ezekiel Elliott on Thanksgiving. Last week, Keenan Allen was the wide receiver one in fantasy. This guy has the upside to get 12-plus targets in any given game. And despite the woes of just 
Justin Herbert, the pervert, at points, I still do believe that Keenan Allen deserves a spot inside of the top six top eight at the wide receiver position, currently ranked as my wide receiver five. At number six, we have Jamar Chase of the Cincinnati Bengals going up against the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore tonight on Thursday Night Football. Now, on paper, realistically, if these were two teams in two different divisions, this game reeks of a high-scoring affair. Now, since this is an AFC North battle, it might end up being a little bit lower scoring. Now, the Ravens' defense is very nice. I like a shout-out of Borat. But without Tee Higgins, we know what's about to happen here. Even if it doesn't end well, right? Even if maybe he's just the wide receiver 20, Joe Burrow is going to feed this fucker the ball. So anywhere outside the top eight would be a little crazy to me. At number seven, we have Stefan Diggs. Now this is another tough defensive matchup for Stefan Diggs. Diggs obviously didn't do much up against the Broncos in a relatively soft matchup. This week, he gets a much tougher matchup in the Jets. But if we look back in week one, a game where the Buffalo Bills struggled against the Jets and ultimately lost, Diggs still had 13 targets, 10 receptions, over 100 yards, and a touchdown. So, when push comes to shove, even though the Bills are flopping around like a fish out of water, even if the Bills are on fraudulent alert, actually they are just frauds at this point, I still think that Josh Allen is just going to go to old reliable and feed the ball to Diggs enough for him to finish inside of the top 12. Moving now to the B tier. At number 8, we have Cooper Cup. Now, I understand Nick Cooper Cup has been absolutely terrible over the last three games. Wide receiver 49, 74, and 53. I get it. I do. But Matthew Stafford appears to be healthy, and I am just going to turn a blind eye to that thing. Call me fucking Stevie Wonder, right? Because Cooper Cup is one of the best receivers in the NFL. If he bends us over a table again without the use of lube, then sure, maybe it's time to start panicking. But up against the Seahawks, I think that Cooper Cup will be just fine. At number nine, we have Brandon Ayuk of the 49ers going up against the Bucks. Ayuk has been very consistent so far this season outside of one down game that dates all the way back to week two up against the Rams in LA. With Debo Samuel back, sure, it might hurt some of his upside right to be like the number one receiver on the week, but I actually think the defense having to worry about Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, and McCaffrey does really help Ayuk out a ton. We just saw the Bucks get in into a pretty high scoring game last week up against the Houston Texans. So this is very much an opportunity for the 49ers to continue on a war path that they started last week up against the Jags. Ayuk scored a touchdown in that game, though he only had three targets which is far out of the ordinary for Ayuk, who's typically a six-plus target guy every single week. I love the matchup against the Bucks, and if the Bucks are able to catch up, which maybe they will, maybe they won't, this could be a potential very high-scoring game. At number 10, we have Devontae Adams of the Las Vegas Raiders going up against the Miami Dolphins in Miami. Now, I know the stat sheet will tell you that Devontae Adams has been a big, fat phony over the last three weeks, but he's gotten seven or more targets in all three of those games, and he had 13 targets last week up against the Jumbo Jets. Now, the Dolphins' defense has really started to come to form as of recently, especially with the return of Jalen Ramsey. They really shut down that Chiefs' defense in, or the Chiefs' offense, in the second half. Jalen Ramsey being a big part of that, and I think Ramsey will be on Adams, but again, Adams is going to get all the targets, and I think eventually he's going to shake out of that funk. At number 11, we have Jalen Waddle. Waddled away, Waddle Waddle of the Dolphins going up against the Raiders. Now, Waddle did get banged up up against the Chiefs in Germany and had a bit of a down game. Waddle says he's good to go. He's fully healthy. Hopefully, he doesn't tweak that back injury again. Otherwise, he's going to have to go into the locker room and get shot up with a perk 30 to go back out there. Wet dream matchup up against the Raiders again. This Dolphins offense is so much better at home. Why is that? Because at home, the crowd noise doesn't affect them, right? They don't have a million fans trying to stop them from motioning and all that. It's a lot easier for the Dolphins to motion at home, which is why, as a Dolphins fan, I want the Dolphins to go on a fucking tear here to potentially get the number one or the number two seed so that a majority of the games in the playoffs are at home. Now, again, I'm not saying the Dolphins are going to win the Super Bowl, but if they were to at least get to the AFC Championship, it would be a hell of a lot easier if all of those games were at home. 
because the Dolphins, again, they're dominant at home. They're dominant against bad defenses at home. And I think this is going to be Jalen Waddle's best game or one of his best games yet in the season because he was the wide receiver six against the Patriots just a couple of weeks ago in week number eight. Next up, we move to the C tier at the wide receiver position. This is a much bigger tier. Now, if you've noticed, you know, in the S, A, B, now in the C tier, most of these guys on a majority of teams are must starts. Now, there's levels to things. That's why they're in different tiers. But while I might not be uber confident in a guy like DK Metcalf, who's our wide receiver 18, that we're going to be talking about in a couple seconds. If you're a podcast listener, you're not looking at the screen. Spoiler alert, he's the wide receiver 18. But these are all guys that unless you have, for some reason, you got a Mon Ra, Allen, Jamar Chase, like you made some trades, you got all these top 10 receivers on your team, you're probably stuck starting. That. And it's not like you're stuck in a fucking uh, laundry machine like you're someone's stepsister and you're about to get plowed, right? You're not actually stuck here. You're pretty happy that you can play these guys. So Mike Evans currently questionable, but he did practice on Thursday with the quad, so I think he's going to be good to go. This matchup is tough, right? This ain't no Weenie Hut Jr.'s matchup here. This is some salty Splatoon shit for Mike Evans up against the 49ers. Mike Evans has been relatively consistent all year. Mike Evans went crazy up against a bad Titans defense last week. The 49ers defense, much better than them. But again, when push comes to shove, Mike Evans feels like a guy that you need to at least have ranked inside one of the upper tiers at wide receiver. At number 13, we got Devontae Smith. Now, Devontae Smith, it's been kind of funny because the season's been like a hamburger for Devontae Smith. I don't think I've ever heard someone use that term in fantasy football, but the first two games of the season, he's great. Top 18 receiver in both games. Then weeks three through seven, a disaster outside the top 40 every single week. And then weeks eight and nine prior to the bye, the other hamburger bun, top 15 receiver in both games. Interesting enough, he has scored a touchdown in all of those games where he has been great. Up against the Chiefs again, I think this could be a Rock'em Sock'em Robots high-scoring tit-for-tat affair, and thus, I have to have Smith ranked this high, even though he has been kind of topsy-turvy all season long. He's been streaky, and that streak right now has been running hot. At number 14, we got Debo of the 49ers going up against the Bucks, wide receiver 17 in his return game, up against the Jags last week, 4 for 4 like he was at Wendy's, for 30 receiving yards, 3 rushes for 29 yards, as well as a touchdown in that game. Great matchup here up against the Bucks. Again, if the Bucks can keep up, this could be another high-scoring affair. Debo Samuel is a guy that typically in the past has been very boomer bust. But this season, in the games he's actually played, because like in week six, he got hurt. Week four, he was a decoy against the Cardinals. He's been a very safe commodity for fantasy football. So while you might have that narrative in your head in the past, like, oh, Debo's boomer bust weekly, this season that hasn't really been the case. Number 15, we have ATAT Adam Thielen of the Panthers going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, on paper, this matchup reeks to high heaven. On paper, if you look at the stats, Adam Thielen has not been very good for the last three games. But I will tell you something. Let me tell you something. Frank Reich is taking back over the play calling abilities. And when Frank Reich was calling the plays, there was a whole lot more of Adam Thielen standing butt naked wide open. Now, will that happen against the Cowboys? Probably not. But based upon how safe Thielen's been all season, and even if he busts, I don't think it's going to be a big fat fucking bukake onto your team. He'll probably still be like a top 30 receiver. I think we should have him ranked inside of the top 20. At number 16, we have Garrett Wilson going up against the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. Now, while the Bills defense is just beaten and battered, the whole defense is hurt. It's the offense that's really kind of burning the sails here, burning the ship of the Bills. And again, I think Garrett Wilson will be just fine here. He's seen 13 or more targets in three straight games, four straight games of 12 or more targets. Now, the problem here is that Zilk, Zilk, that Zach Wilson can't score touchdowns. Garrett Wilson hasn't scored a touchdown since week two. I don't even think Zach Wilson's thrown a touchdown in like three straight games or two straight games because I think he threw one against the Giants, right? The disaster. But again, in fantasy football, volume is king. So Wilson will still probably finish top 18, even if he doesn't find pay dirt. At number 17, we have scary Terry McLaurin of the Commanders going up against the G-Men. Great matchup for him last week up against Seattle was a bit of a doozy, but he still had eight targets, four receptions, 33 receiving yards. You know, 
You're allowed to have a down game every once in a while. Right before that, he was ripping off four straight games inside the top 25, and he has had five straight games with eight or more targets. The Giants' defense, no bueno, not very good at all. So after one down week of McLaurin, I don't think you should be ready to just jump ship. Mayday, mayday, wee-woo, wee-woo. Just stick on the ship with McLaurin. Again, all of these guys, there's some negatives to all these guys, right? Mike Evans, for instance, He's going up against the 49ers. Devontae Smith, been very inconsistent. Debo, typically a guy that's inconsistent, but this year he's righted his wrongs. Adam Thielen, Bryce Young kind of reeks. This offense kind of sucks. Garrett Wilson, Zach Wilson is bad. Terry McLaurin kind of has to deal with the problems of some games. They don't really use him as much earlier on in the season. Now he's kind of broke through that recently. And then DK... The reason why you won't like him is because he's another really boom or bust guy. Now, something interesting about Metcalf is just like Debo is in years prior, he was truly a boom or bust receiver, right? The booms would be the highest of highs, right? Where DK's going crazy. He drops 25 plus points. He drops his nuts in the defense's mouth. And you are so excited. And the lowest of lows felt like you took a cannon shot from point blank or like you got quick scoped by a Barrett 50 caliber and the guy was standing three feet away from you, right? This year, the lows have been like wide receiver 40, which again, is that great? Fuck no, baby! But it's not going to sink your metaphorical battleship. The matchup against the Rams isn't great, but it also isn't terrible. Pretty middle of the road, in my opinion. Metcalf's just a guy that I'm going to keep ranking inside the top 18, 20 ish guys. He's not a guy that I really have on any of my fantasy teams because he was a fade this offseason. And with JSN getting more touches, you know, it's just kind of, it just kind of feels kind of, kind of, how many times you say kind of in a row? But it, it does really feel like I, I'm starting Metcalf, whatever. But it doesn't feel like, yay, I'm so happy. Yippee. I'm starting DK Metcalf, right? Moving now to the D tier, wide receiver 19 through 24. If you guys have enjoyed thus far, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button down below. And real quick, I would like to give you guys a quick word from our friends and our sponsor over at Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy is the best place to play NFL Pick'em in the whole entire universe. And Underdog has a great offer for you guys today that we'll be talking about in just a couple of seconds. But first, I want to explain how Underdog's Pick'em game works. Now, I am recording today's video after Monday Night Football. It's early Tuesday morning. It's like 1 a.m. So not all of the pick em picks are out yet. But for right now, we got the Bengals versus the Ravens in Baltimore on Thursday Night Football. For this game, we're going to have to go ahead and pick a minimum of two players from at least two different teams. So we're going to go with one player from the Bengals, one from the Ravens. We're going to go with Joe Burrow, higher than half an interception. And we're going to go with Lamar Jackson, higher than half an interception. I think the defenses are going to get at least one pick each in this game. And I think that is how this game is going to play out. It's going to be a close, gritty game between two AFC North rivalry teams. So if both of those picks hit, if Joe Burrow and Lamar both throw an interception, then we'll get three times our entry fee. If you do three picks, it is six times, four picks is 10 times, and five picks is 20 times your entry fee. Now, if you're new to Underdog Fantasy and live in one of these states on your screen right now, if you use promo code NOTORIOUS or click on the link in the video description, you will receive a first match deposit bonus of up to $100. If you deposit $100, they give an additional $100. 50 additional 50, 25 additional 25. The minimum deposit on our dog fantasy is $10. If you have a gambling problem, please make sure that you call 1 800 Gambler. Back on into things here, wide receiver 19, DeAndre Hopkins, going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville. Now, Will Levis came out the gates on fire up against the Falcons, right? Four tugs, no interceptions. Hopkins had three touchdowns in that game, and then recently he cooled off. Now, the thing is, Hopkins has still been getting back-to-back weeks with nine or more targets. Just got to hope they're a little bit more accurate. The Jags' defense isn't all that great. Again, I don't really think the Jaguars will somehow fuck around and lose this game, but Hopkins should be just fine. Again, I'm not ready to jump off ship on D-Hop just yet, but if he is like outside the top 30 receiver this week, it would be hard to apologize for that, and it would be hard for me to like make some type of excuse to want to keep ranking him this highly. At number 20, we got Christian Kirk going up against the Tennessee Titans. Amazing matchup for Kirk. Kirk has kind of been matchup proof for the Jags when the Jaguars were a team down in the gutters. Kirk was balling. 
when the Jags were balling, Kirk was also balling. Ridley has been basically dog shit all season, non-existent in a lot of games. Kirk's been playing quite well. I think anywhere outside the top 24 is a crazy ranking for Christian Kirk. I get that the Jaguars looked like a two-pack of ass last week. I get that the Jaguars did not show up to play against the San Francisco 49ers. You would think coming out of the bye, they would be ready to roll. Now, I know, Nick, the 49ers were also on bye, but you would think that they would be ready, and they wouldn't at least get smacked that hard. I get, oh, they lose a close game. Okay, that's fine. But they got demolished. They got dicked down. But Kirk, six receptions on 11 targets for 100 plus yards. Even if they somehow lose to the Titans, Kirk's probably having a solid performance. At number 21, we got Deontay Johnson of the Steelers going up against the Browns in Cleveland. Deontay currently questionable. I think he will play, though. Now, Deontay Johnson had a disaster class up against the Packers. One reception on four targets for 17 yards, whereas the three weeks prior, he had at least six targets. The week prior, up against the Titans in prime time, he scored his first touchdown since the Big Ben era there. 90 receiving yards, seven receptions, nine targets. Great. Beautiful chef's kiss. Now, the matchup against the Browns is tough, but I don't believe we should just panic off of one down game for Deontay Johnson. He's proven to us this season that he is a skilled receiver. He's proven that to us throughout his whole career. He's proven to be a target hog in this offense. I get why you might want to bury him a little bit lower, right? His expert consensus rankings, wide receiver 28. But I think from sheer volume, he should be able to finish in the top 24. At number 22, we got Nico Cousin. Let's go bowling. Nico Collins going up against the Arizona Cardinals at home in Houston did practice on Wednesday in a limited fashion. We still haven't gotten the report for Thursday's practice, but as long as he practices in limited fashion again, or maybe he's a full go, I think he should be good to go come Sunday. Wet dream matchup up against the Cardinals. The problem is now Houston has entered into a scenario where not only is Collins great, so is Dell, and so is Noah Brown. So we can't really boost Collins just because of the matchup up to be like the wide receiver 16, even though I think he could easily finish there because, again, the Cardinals' defense is hot garbage. So I love Nico Collins this week, but I won't go so far on a limb to say he's a lock to be like a top 16, top 12 guy because of how well the other receivers have played. Now, it's great that the other receivers are playing so well because it just helps the offense move the ball and gives more opportunities for Nico Collins to score. Nico missed last week against the Bengals, but the week prior to that, he was the wide receiver 14 against the Bucks. And I think I misspoke earlier. Maybe I did when I was talking about the Bucks last game against the Texans. That was incorrect, but I know someone in the comments were already like, Nick, you fucking idiot. The Bucks didn't play the Texans last week, you dumbass. That was week nine, you idiot. <laughs> so next up, we got wide receiver 23, Jordan Addison Ray, going up against the Denver Broncos. I thought earlier on in the week that Justin Jefferson would play. It would appear that the team wants him to be 100% healthy before coming back. Now the team has a game next week against the Bears and then the bye week, so we might not be seeing Jay Jettas return until after the bye week, week 14 against the Raiders, which I guess would make sense sense, right? This is a team with playoff aspirations, but they don't want to rush back. Their fr it's weird to say that like a receiver is a franchise guy, but Jefferson is a franchise guy for the Vikings. So Addison's been decent recently. Hawkinson went crazy in New Orleans. Addison was all right. He had 69 receiving yards. Very nice. I like on four receptions, seven targets. He was all right. Jordan Addison, still a very talented player. But Nick, the Broncos defense has been a lot better recently. I know, but I still do really think with how good Josh Dobbs looks, Addison should be a top 24 guy. And number 24, we got Puka Nakua. Now, I did bump him down the rankings a decent amount. Expert consensus rankings got him as the wide receiver 19. Now, with Cooper Cup back, Nakua has been a lot less reliable. But the ceiling is still incredibly high to be like a top five, top three receiver. Nakua has looked like one of the best, if not the best rookie receiver this year. The matchup against Seattle's pretty mid, like we talked about with Cup. So here puts Nakua as the wide receiver 24. His ceiling, like I said, is very high. His ceiling is the moon, but his floor is no longer like the wide receiver 18 or 20. Now it's like wide receiver 45. So while I'm a big Puka stan, and while I, I have him on my teams, I'm blindly throwing him in there, right? I'm just playing him, fuck it, it is what it is. I can't just rank him inside, like, the top 12 because of what he's done previously, right? Because of how much we loved him recently, he's been 
ice, ice. Hold. Moving now to wide receivers 25 through 28 in the E tier. And number 25, we have Tank Dell. You could argue to move Tank Dell into the tier higher. Expert consensus rankings on Fantasy Pros got him as wide receiver 22. I got him as the wide receiver 25 against the Cardinals. Two straight weeks inside of the top 12. Both of those games with 10 or more targets. Last week without Nico Collins, he had 14 targets, 6 receptions, 56 receiving yards, and a touchdown. Like I said, Nico Collins has been balling. Hank Dell's been balling, and so has Noah Brown. And I think this week, one of those guys is going to be the odd man out. Now, against the Cardinals, maybe all three of them are hitting the fucking gritty in the end zone, right? They're having, a, or they're hitting that CJ Stroud dance, right? That's fine. But I don't think that's the most likely scenario. So it puts Dell in an interesting spot. You're probably still forcing him into your lineup, jamming him into your lineup because of the upside, but this could be. One of those games that we're used to with Dell, where it's like the wide receiver 60, right? Again, this isn't to shit on Tank Dell. It's just to put the situation into perspective here. At number 26, we got Wiki Wiki, DJ Moore going up against the Lions in Detroit. Now, Justin Fields is back, and we've seen DJ Moore have great games with Justin Fields, so I think that helps out DJ Moore a ton. But the question is, how back is Justin Fields? Like, sure, maybe he's 90% healthy, but is he rusty? Like, how are we going to see Justin Fields look? And I know, up against the Lions, this could be a higher-scoring game. The Lions' defense has looked flaccid as of recently. So maybe Moore dominates, you know? Maybe he has. Maybe he's like fucking Shaq or Giannis in the paint. Dominant. But maybe Fields is a little bit slow this game. Maybe Fields doesn't look himself. And maybe that leads to DJ Moore falling outside the top 30. So, again... Got to put perspective into things. That's why he's the wide receiver 26. And number 27, we have Hollywood Brown going up against the Houston Texans. In Houston, I think the Texans have a pretty underrated defense. Kyler Murray comes back last week against Atlanta, but Hollywood Brown only has four targets, one reception, 28 yards. I talked about this throughout the week, but Kyler was on his Oprah Winfrey, right? You get the ball, you get the ball, you all get the ball, right? Distributing the wealth to everyone. Except for Brown, who only had four targets. Now, with Kyler looking as good as he did, I still have high beliefs in Hollywood, but I think the Texans' defense might be able to maybe lessen how great the offense looked last week for the Cardinals. So I think wide receiver 27 is fair. And number 28, we got Cortland Sutton. Now, this guy is addicted to scoring touchdowns. He has scored a touchdown in every single game outside of two. So he's played nine games, seven touchdowns, two games without a touchdown. Up against the cold like Minnesota Vikings defense that is getting a lot stronger. You know, it's like they're on the roids in the second half of the season. Things look fine for Sutton. He'll probably still score. But... Even in some of those games that he scored, he's gotten like 30 yards. Now, last week, he had 11 targets, 8 receptions against Buffalo. And if that is a scenario that continues, right, if week in and week out, we see, hey, Russell Wilson really wants to feed Sutton with 8 or more targets every single week, then we'll move him up the rankings. But I would say, it wouldn't be all that crazy if he scored, had 5 targets, 4 receptions, 40 yards. That wouldn't be that surprising either. So that's why I got him as the wide receiver 28, but he does feel pretty reliable. At the F tier here, wide receivers 29 through 36, we just have an amalgamation of guys that I would just describe as pretty high upside, but not all of them have been performing recently, and some of them have some quarterback issues here. At number 29, we got Tyler Lockett in my pocket skirt. Now, last week, he was the wide receiver 8 against the Commanders, 8 receptions, 92 receiving yards, and a touchdown. Lockett is a lot like Metcalf, boom, or bust, but Lockett's bust is a colossal one. It is a, hey, Lockett shit the bed, I got 4 points, right? <laughs> I got 6 points. Whereas Metcalf, it's like, oh, you at least got 10. You at least got 10. Matchup against the Rams is fine. But again, we'll read off his game starting from week 1. Wide receiver 91. 6, 56, 42, 19, 48, 12, 55, 8. Very up and down, like the stock market. So, lock it. Some people will say you have to start him every week. Some people will be like, I'm, uh, I'm waiting for a better matchup. And this, to me, is not the best of matchups. And number 30, we got Godwin. Now, Godwin continues to get fed, but it hasn't really turned into hu that huge of games. Now, he's been decent as of recently. Two down games, his last two, but weeks 8, 7, and 6, he was looking solid. 
49ers defense scares me enough not to give him super high praises. I still think he's a great receiver, but with how good Evans has looked, it kind of has to bump Godwin down. At number 31, we got Tyler. Yeah, Boyd! Going up against the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. Bad matchup. Good situation for him, though, without T. Higgins. Now, last game out, Tyler Boyd without T. Higgins had eight receptions, 12 targets, 117 yards up against the Texans. Now, the usage of the crocodile, the alligator man, Trenton Irwin, has been a little bit frustrating if you are a Boyd owner. Ultimately, the matchup here makes me not want to rank him super highly. If they were going up against, for instance, like the Colts or something, like they are in week 14, then... Boyd would probably be ranked like wide receiver 24, but because he's going up against the Ravens, wide receiver 31 feels fair. At number 32, we got Noah Brown. Now, Noah Brown's been a top six receiver in back-to-back -back weeks, but I got to bury him a little bit lower if Nico Collins plays like I think he will. At the end of the day, some people will just blindly play Nico Collins. I mean, blind, blind, today, Junior will blindly play fucking Noah Brown without a care in the world, and that's okay. Because we talk about this a lot on the channel. When a player is on fire NBA Jam style, they rip off a few games in a row of straight-up greatness. You just got to believe in it. Now, some play people are more likely to blindly believe than maybe I am. Now, if I had Noah Brown on my team and I had Tyler Lockett, Chris Godwin, Tyler Boyd, I would probably start Noah Brown over those guys. But in the rankings, we have to acknowledge that there's also a safety part of things, right? High risk, high reward. Like, I think Lockett, pretty risky, but I think he's even a little bit safer than Brown because I think Brown might just get two fucking targets this week. Like, that wouldn't be that surprising. Again, the matchup's great against the Cardinals. I like Noah Brown. I like what I saw the last two weeks. But there is a chance that just like Humpty Dumpty, I think Kerplatz falls off the wall. Number 33, we got Amari Cooper. Now, Amari Cooper was previously ranked a lot higher, but then... They have DTR now starting at quarterback. Back-to-back -back weeks, top 18 with Deshaun Watson. Things were looking great for a Cooper end-of-season surgeons. Hey, wow! Like Owen Wilson, Amari Cooper, top 12 receiver maybe for the last couple games, or last couple of games, right? Like maybe like week 9 through week 17. But now, he plays the Steelers. Tough defense. Tough as nails. With Dorian Thompson-Robinson as the starting quarterback. That screams, run the fuck away. Now, again, he's Amari Cooper. He's really good. So if I'm DTR, I'm feeding him the ball. But I think this is going to be a run-heavy game. So Amari Cooper is kind of on the shit list right now. Number 34, we got Jacoby Myers. Now, Jacoby Myers has been probably the safest receiver on the Raiders, the safest asset in this Raiders offense this season. He's been safer than Adams and safer than Josh Jacobs. This week, he gets the Dolphins in Miami. Tough defensive matchup, and he only saw two targets last week. And in Week 8, he only had one target. The boomer bust capabilities of Jacoby Myers have now became a lot more relevant. So while I still think he has big play upside, he's a big play player. He could easily be a top 12 receiver this week. He's the wide receiver 17 on the season. Up against the Dolphins, we rank him lower. 35, Jahan Dotson going up against the G-Men. Jahan Dotson was on fire NBA Jam style week 8, week 9. Cooled off in a big way. Jumped in the fucking cold tub last week against Seattle. Two targets, zero receptions. Bounce back feels eminent here against the Giants. But we will note that Jahan Dotson's basically been terrible all season. Had two great games. So I'm not ready to really crown this guy and give him more of a benefit of the doubt. At number 36, we got Zay Flowers going up against the Bengals. Bad matchup for Flowers and with how effective this team is at running the rock in the red zone that does really hurt Zay Flowers touchdown upside he only has one touchdown in 10 games played this season should finish inside the top 40 has high upside but again not a guy that I'm just banging the drums for this week and better matchups I would like up against the Chargers next week in week 12 so thank you guys in LA so thank you guys all so much for watching if you didn't enjoy today's video make sure you smash that fucking subscribe button like you're the Hulk baby or just Lightly caress it. Hit that like button as well. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter or X, please do at NotoriousFNTSY if you want access to the Patreon for the weekly rankings, as well as answer to any of the questions you guys may have. It is linked in the video description, the Patreon for $7.50. Check out one of the videos on your screen right now if you haven't seen them already. Love you guys all so much. Be back tonight with a live stream at around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Thursday Night Football. Love you guys. Have a great one. As always, good boy!